Today we are going to learn the observer pattern. So in object-oriented software design, so a function consists of a sequence of steps, and a program is no longer viewed as a sequence of steps. Instead, a program consists of a configuration and collaboration. And configuration means that we allocate objects and then assemble the objects into collaborations. And the collaboration means the interaction among the objects by sending messages back and forth so that all these objects work together to achieve some uh, goals. So for interactive applications, we have built some interactive applications using uh, uh, Qt. So those interactive applications behave a little bit differently than the programs that compute some function because they long running. Uh, right uh, and it may not terminate so a uh, window a dialog window for example is I mean display there and tell you uh, close it and it characterized by long periods of e relative inactivity followed by short bursts of uh, user behavior and they also they are structured a little bit differently uh, the procedure code is, e is either conversion code or collaboration code So the objects in uh, collaboration often need to maintain consistency. Often we have one subject and also with uh, multiple observers. For example, here is uh, we have one subject with some uh, data and we have multiple observers that, that they display data in different software, for example, in different programs, in different uh, uh, shapes, in different ways. And here, for example, this the subject could be the date could be uh, uh, the stock price in Nasdaq, and the observers could be uh, an observer could be an application uh, a software running on your smartphone a, a stock uh, trading app that this can display the stock price in Nasdaq in real time, and uh, another observer could be a, a web application that the web pages. Uh, for example, like Yahoo Finance, they display the stock prices also in real time, and so on. So all these observers one receive the data from the receive updates from the subject, and then they update their uh, information the, uh, to the uh, diff I mean accordingly. So this kind of interaction interaction is also known as a publish subscribe. So the subjects send out notifications to the observers and the observers receive notifications and update their states. So how to build such subject observer applications? The design pattern for this is called observer pattern. And this is the UML diagram for the observer pattern. OK, so here you have two base classes. So one is a subject, another is observer. Both are abstract classes. And in a subject, you have uh, three functions that uh, are common for the concrete subjects. One is uh, uh, attach some observ attach an observer, basically insert, add an observer, and detach an observer basically means you delete an observer. So probably you ha you need to have a, a vector, of, for example, a vector of uh, observer pointers. And uh, here you have another function notify. For notify, you basically for all the observers, for all the observers in the vector, you basically call their update function, and the parameter you pass to it is this basically is the pointer to the concrete subject. And also, it has a pure virtual function called get state, basically get the information from um, the subject states that's in stored in the concrete subject. And so this base class subject, you may have multiple. Uh, uh, subject classes. And also here, just an illustration, you have get state, you may have multiple get state functions, get state one, get state two, and so on. I mean, you have multiple. And here, subject states, you have a lot of information could be stored here also. And in the base, in the direct class, in the concrete subject, you basically implement uh, the get state information, for example, return this subject state. And th these three functions, attach, detach, and notify, are uh, the same uh, for all the concrete subjects, so they can be implemented in the base class. And on the right hand side is the observer uh, class hierarchy. You have one observer, which is the, the base class, and it's also abstract. You have a pure virtual function update. 
for the update you basically receive a subject pointer and uh, here so for the uh, concrete you may have multiple uh, concrete uh, observers that uh, you inherit from this observer and uh, so in the subject in the update so here the concrete observer you need to implement the update function the update function for example uh, this update function could be you just get called uh, the guest function from the concrete subject and here the concrete observer you may also store the information that you receive from the subjects and here also so different concrete observers may implement this update function differently they may go to the concrete subject they may get different information so that's why we keep this update in the uh, a base class observer as a pure virtual function and then in the concrete observer in the direct class we provide concrete implementation of this uh, update class for this up update function so you can use the observer pattern in uh, these situations so basically when the abstract when the abstraction has two aspects and one aspect depends on the other so encapsulating this abstract in separate objects that allow us to vary and reuse them independently and the uh, second scenario is when a change in one subject requires we change the other objects accordingly so then the one in the uh, that the initially the change is called the subject and the others that changes based on the change in this subject got, uh, are called observers the third scenario is when a, an object want to notify other objects without making assumptions of what these objects are so in other words basically you don't want these objects tightly coupled for example in this uh, based on uh, this UML diagram so for the concrete of the subject you don't care what the concrete observer uh, that are observing you you just as long as they conform to the same interface then that's will be fine so the participants include subjects so the subject need to know the observers and uh, a subject may have multiple observers and the subject need to provide interfaces for attaching and detaching uh, observer sub objects and for the observer they define an updating interface for the objects that should be notified of the change in the subject and for the concrete subjects this they store basically the states of the information um, that the, may be interested to the concrete observers and they send notification whenever this states information changes and for the concrete observer they basically store the state that should be stay consistent with the subjects and also they need to implement uh, the observer updating function interface to keep the state consistent with the subject's uh, information and they may maintain a reference to the concrete subject uh, object so there are two main advantages for the uh, observer pattern one is the, the abstract coupling between subject and uh, observer so the subject only need to know that it has a list of observers and uh, each observer conform to some interfaces and that's it so whether the subject doesn't need to know what concrete class of uh, of their observers as long as they conform to the same interface that will be uh, good enough and also they support this data pattern supports uh, the broadcast communication so the notification is broadcast automatically to all the interested objects that subscribe, subscribe to it and uh, they can add and remove observers at any time so now we want to we have learned a number of uh, uh, design patterns and now let's review how these design patterns avoid making changes to existing classes all right let's take a look so for the abstract factory pattern you can add new data classes to existing algorithms classes without changing the algorithm classes and similarly you can add new algorithm classes without changing the data classes so for the template method pattern you can add new variants of the algorithm without changing the base algorithm and the adapter pattern you can make two classes collaborate without changing any of the 
classes. And achieve by you can make an adapter that you inherit from the two classes. And a composite pattern. So you can add new leaf or composite classes without changing existing composite classes. And for visitor pattern, you can add new operations without changing existing classes. And uh, so those existing classes often form a, a hierarchy that may need traversal. And for the uh, builder pattern, you can add new data. Uh, you can add new per new preparation algorithms without modifying the data structure uh, uh, construction algorithms. And you can add new construction algorithms for the I mean, same data structure or for new data structures without modifying the data preparation algorithms. So the data preparation algorithm are basically the director and uh, the data. Uh, structure construction algorithm are uh, basically the builder, as you remember. And for observer pattern, you basically you can add new concrete observers and concrete subjects without changing existing concrete observers or even I mean, and, and the concrete subjects as well.